Grandpa Chip lived with his wife Zinaida Taikanovna in a remote village. Actually, his real name was Ilya Matvevich. But he got the nickname, Chip. Because he loved playing checkers with the guys. And tapping his checkers on the board. However, he stubbornly insisted on calling. Them, fish and refused to change. So, that's how Grandpa Chip got his nickname. Ilya Matvevich was an old forester who had retired. And lived peacefully on his pension. He still loved his rifle and enjoyed wandering. Through the forest with it. He hadn't hunted big game. But he would bring home rabbits, partridges. And other smaller animals for special occasions. He and his wife Zinaida had lived together since their youth. And they had a harmonious relationship. Despite occasional arguments. They didn't have children of their own. But had raised their grandchildren after. The children moved to the city to seek a better life. They also had some animals on their small farm. Like a cow, rabbits, and about a dozen chickens. However, they missed having fresh milk. As the village milk had more cream than the city milk. One morning, Grandpa Chip took his rifle. And headed into the forest to. Hunt or gather mushrooms and berries. After wandering for a couple of hours without success. He heard a child crying. He worried that a child might be lost in the forest or attacked by wild animals. He followed the sound and discovered a pit. An abandoned wolf trap with a trapped bear cub inside. He carefully descended into the pit and managed to free the bear cub. The cub clung to his leg, clearly frightened, and refused to let go. Grandpa Chip realized that the mother bear could appear at any moment. So he decided to take the cub with him to keep it safe. He put the bear cub in his backpack and started heading home. Upon returning home, his wife Zinaida was surprised. And a bit upset about the bear cub being brought into the house. They discussed what to do with it and decided to. Care for the cub until it got stronger. Over time, the bear cub grew comfortable around humans. Played with the dog and cat and even entertained them by imitating a dancing rooster. The bear cub became a beloved member of their household, and it would sit with Grandpa Chip on the porch, hugging him around the neck. It seemed the bear cub missed its mother, and the affectionate moments brought joy to both the bear cub and the old couple. In this heartwarming tale, Grandpa Chip's kindness and willingness to Help the trapped bear cub showcase his compassionate nature. And the unique bond he formed with the little animal. So, several days, maybe even weeks. Went by, who keeps track of time in the village. And then, one evening. Zina Ida was getting ready to milk the cow. She took a bucket, went out onto the porch. And hurried back into the house. Pressing herself against the window. From the forest, across the large field. A bear was approaching. The bear cub's reaction was indescribable. As soon as it caught the scent of its mother. It ran along the fence, growling and trying to. Tear off a picket to rush towards her. Evidently, the mother bear had found the trail of her cub. And had come to rescue it. At last, the cub managed to break through the fence and ran to meet its mother. The old couple watched this emotional reunion. And Grandpa Chip even shed a discreet tear. While Zina Ida wiped her eyes with a handkerchief. A year passed since the mother bear had. Come to their house for her cub. Time went on, and autumn arrived. The locals were already collecting cranberries from the forest. And Chip hadn't ventured out to the marshes yet. He decided to go to the forest early in the morning to collect cranberries since they seemed to be abundant this year. He took a small basket and a bucket and headed through the field toward the forest. As he got closer to the marsh, he was disappointed not to find any red cranberry patches. 
However, he still managed to gather a significant amount. He got carried away with his task and didn't realize how far he had gone into the forest. Tired, he sat down on a mound. And before he knew it, he fell asleep. When he woke up, the sun was setting. He had missed the time to head back home. He decided to spend the night at Granny Lesnea's hut, which was nearby, and return home in the morning. As he headed toward the hut, he got stuck in the marsh, losing one of his boots in the process. Cold and hungry, he finally reached Granny Lesnea's hut. He lit a fire, warmed up, ate a meal, and treated his tired legs with alcohol. He eventually dozed off and started dreaming about his wife. Zinaida Tykanovna, wiping his face with a damp cloth and saying, Oh, Grandpa, Grandpa. He woke up with a wet face. And realized that someone was licking him with a wet tongue. He saw a massive bear sitting next to him on its hind legs. And he couldn't believe his eyes. The bear was licking him. And Chip thought he might have died and gone to the afterlife. Or perhaps he was being licked by devils. He tried to move his arms and legs, and they responded. He realized he was still alive, and the bear was real. Chip whispered to himself, it can't be, in disbelief. The bear had grown to an incredible size. The bear then stood up and left. Chip was now alone again. But he realized that he wasn't ready to die just yet. He decided to try and make his way back home. He crawled his way out of the marsh and eventually made it back home. Exhausted but alive. He felt grateful for the second chance at life. Realizing that the massive bear that had licked him was actually the cub he had saved. He wondered if he had encountered some kind of guardian spirit or a supernatural force. He thought about the bear and its mother and how they had come to his aid. As the night went on, Chip reflected on the unusual events that had unfolded in his life. He realized that he had been given a unique opportunity to understand the bond between the bear and its cub. He felt a sense of awe and wonder at the mysteries of the natural world. And so, the tale of Grandpa Chip and the bear continued, with its twists and turns reminding us of the interconnectedness of all living beings and the mysteries that surround us. They saw what made them speechless. And the wolf came out of the woods with the boy. Do you have pets at home? It is well known that owning a cat or dog has a positive effect on our mood and well-being. Especially important if we have a child in our family. When they grow up in the company of another friend, he learns patience and thoughtfulness. He learns friendship what is it. Such dogs or kittens mean a lot to their children. And in today's video we will see a very different pet. We will tell you an amazing story. Parents bought a little boy a dog. The baby fell in love with his new friend from the very beginning. His parents didn't seem to notice what happened between them. Nor did they notice the ticking time bomb. Later, when the dog grew up, something happened here that shocked the whole town and the local community. The family lived in a village in Holland that was quite high up in the hills near the forest. The family lived on the compound. His father a hunter and his mother working part-time on a local farm. The couple have a 12-year-old son, Julian, who loves animals and often visits his neighbors to play with their dogs. He likes to take them for walks, which he does every time he gets home from school. His neighbors are pretty old, so they really appreciate him because they don't have the energy to spend with their pets. Julian is so positive, you can probably guess that. His yearly dream is to have a pet of his own, and he asks his parents to buy him a puppy for various birthday celebrations or holidays. Unfortunately, both Julian's parents were adamant and came up with more excuses to oppose the offer to buy or adopt a puppy. But one day the family is visited by Uncle Juliana Lars, 
who is also the boy's godfather. This man knows very well the dreams of small children. Which is why he gave him a grey puppy as a gift despite the objections of his parents, who were furious that his uncle had gone against their wishes. But he spent hours to explain to them that it is important for a child to have his own dog. After lengthy negotiations, the couple agreed to keep the quadruped. But they regretted it a few months later. And we can actually guess why. As Julian and the puppy named Gate were basically inseparable. The boy spends all his free time with his new friend. And he always plays with it. He enjoyed cleaning up his poo at certain times. And going for regular walks with him. And as the weeks and months passed. Julian's parents admitted that. Their son was indeed perfect for taking care of his pup. On one day the dog fell down and appeared to be sick. The parents and Julian took him to the vet. Luckily, after a checkup there was nothing wrong with him. But the vet said something that worried the family. And the report turned out to be the dog isn't a dog. It appears to be a wolf. And it doesn't appear to be a purebred wild wolf from the woods. There must have been a domestic dog in its lineage. So in this case these inquiries usually it's a routine to procedure. They don't have to report the situation to the police. While Gat isn't exactly a dog. He basically acts like a normal collie. So he won't be caught in court when he's due next week. And the wolf and Julian continue their peaceful. Happy lives together. One day the parents announced that. They were celebrating their 13th wedding anniversary this coming Saturday. And they wanted to have a small party at home with some guests. But the mother suggested that the wolf should be locked in the barn at that time. And they asked it not scare the guests. The news came as a surprise to Julian, who was also one of their family members after all. The boy shouted, anyway. Ada man had fixed a time for the party and it would be locked. Julian's father took the wolf cub to the barn and locked him against the wall. And although there was nothing there, he was safe. This animal is noisy because it wants to join everyone in the party late at night. As the guests began to slowly leave the premises, the parents noticed that their son was missing. Everyone thought he had been sleeping at home. But when they opened the door to the room, they saw no one, and their first thought was that he might be playing in the barn with his pals. But when they entered the barn, the wolf was peacefully sleeping. There was no sign of the child. And he started calling to him. And they basically searched the entire house. With no news or response from Julian. The coyotes have joined in the search for his work. And it will be terrible if Julian does. Go to the forest alone at night. Everyone was worried about him. He might have lost his way there. He probably wanted to play there at first. But when he wanted to go home he got lost. Not only his parents and friends. But basically the whole village started looking for the boy. Even the old people of the village also walked around the forest looking for Julian, hours later. One of the volunteers found a piece of clothing. The boy had worn that day. Next to footprints leading into the dark forest. They should be able to guess. What kind of tragic accident a young boy. Can have going to such a place at night. No one can find the boy in the dark. They conduct such a pointless search in the dark. Everyone agrees the rescue operation was extended and by. The next morning friends were terrified. When they saw the wild animal. They just want to find the little boy. Who disappeared in the forest. But to their surprise, he smelled pieces. Of Julian's clothes. Which had Julian sent on them. So it moved forward immediately, and people rushed to it. But no one could catch up with the young predator. The wolves disappeared. The search party walked for hours through the dense woods. The sun was setting, and everyone was exhausted and wanted to give up. 
they decided to go home and rest for a while. The wolf ran to a nearby place. It found the little boy unconscious. The poor boy's legs fell into the bear's trap. The wolf sits quietly next to Julian. And keeps an eye on his surroundings. Local residents analyzed the footprints on the ground. And they also found it there. Meanwhile on the other side the wolf found. Julian and took him home alone. The boy was then taken to hospital immediately. He awoke the next day and told the story of his miraculous survival. It turned out that he entered the forest, he just got lost. Suddenly he felt a pain in his ankle as he accidentally stepped on a trap. And he lost consciousness. The wolf found him and managed to take him straight from the bush to their home. And if it weren't for this clever animal, the boy would have stayed in that trap and probably died. Such is the friendship between the boy and this wild predator. His parents never spoke ill of the wolf again. And he had become a sensation and a true hero to the whole town. He proved by his actions that he was a faithful friend. And that people could trust him. It's a shame Julian's parents had to discover this in such a painful way.